Um, hi, I'm Shade. I'm a support technician for Stellum. And I'll just go through some basic um, functionalities within EdgeCam to show you how user-friendly it is. And what makes EdgeCam very nice is you have some aligning abilities which makes it very easy. You can add fixtures, so EdgeCam comes with a fixture database by default. All these fixtures are in here by default. Of course, you can uh, create your own custom vice or clamping system or bring in your own fixture as well. Just going to be blunt and select the 12 millimeter end mill. Of course, there's many settings in here that you can change like your position, um, the maximum spindle speed, if you want coolant on or off, through coolant, if you have that capability. The tool is selected and we can now start machining. So, usually we will start with facing, but I'm going to skip that for now. I'm just going to jump into roughing. And we're going to machine from a solid. You've got your strategies. Um, Waveform would be the way to go, so that will allow you to take the full depth of the cutter and utilize the full flute, saving you costs on uh, tool life and machine time. Offsets, uh, we will add an offset of 0 0.5. This will allow uh, uh, some stock for the finishing cut. Step over, usually about 15 to 20 percent, but for presentation purposes, I'm going to make this 50 so that we can have a fast simulation. Stock type would be current stock. Feeds and speeds you can um, edit if you want. Feed rate, let's say 1500. Plunge rate 1000. Spindle speed, let's say 5500. Of course, this will depend on your type of cutter and coolant and so forth. Clearance would, uh, would be 15 mil above the job. The top level, I'm going to say use stock level. Depth, I'm going to keep associative. Cutting increment, let's say 10 millimeter at a time. Control, I'm going to leave the rest as is. Select features to machine. This, right click to accept, accept. And there the parts basically roughed out. So this is just a good indication of you do not need to complicate things. You can just start machining. You can now go to the simulator and get a live presentation of what you are cutting. With the simulation, you would be able to see any crashes. If your tool stick out is long enough, and if you are going to machine into your vise, which in some cases will happen. You can also switch the machine off for a better presentation of your uh, simulation. Now, there is a very nice function inside of EdgeCam. I am going to say depth, and I'm going to put my depth down, let's say by minus 20. And the idea is to cut into the vise. Okay. Why is it cutting into the vise? It's supposed to not cut into the vise, actually. Use check fixtures. There we go. So these values you can set. <laughs> That's why. So it's nothing I did wrong. Um, fixture offset. You can say stay within five mil away from each fixture. And I'm going to say OK and OK. And now EdgeCam 
will actually calculate the toolpath to not cut into the vise. So you can see that you've got some um, blank spaces in there. And if I now go and simulate this, it would cut on the sides and leave where the vise is. So let's just switch this on. There we go. So you can use this for any type of fixture. Any type of fixture, any solid model can be defined as a fixture or stock within HCAM. And this will really help if you might have needed to put some clamps on here if you have a predefined uh, jig. Anyway, um, let's delete this roughing cycle because what I want to show you is that sometimes you would like to just machine one pocket at a time. So yes, you can select the wireframes if you want or you can use Edgecam's feature finder. What the feature finder will do is it will automatically look for any 2D pockets, 2D pockets being uh, some, some geometry like this. Um, we've got 2D bosses. Anything that's embossed would be a 2D boss like the outside of this job. Um, we've got open pockets and something open like that. We've got open mills, flat faces if you're interested in only machining one face, and holes, of course. Um, I'm going to accept this, and HCAM will look at some features. It will indicate uh, the boss. We've got the 2D pocket. 2D pocket and through holes. Now these through holes have been combined because they are the same size and of course you can switch that off if you want. You can also render your features and switch your job off and you can have a good indication of what your features are. The benefit of this is if I want to go and machine now, let's say roughing, I'm going to keep everything as is except my depth. Okay, my depth is associative, depth of cut 10 mil. I want to machine only that and only that. And I'm going to right click to accept and Edgecam will only machine those pockets. That's the benefits of using features as well. Once again, we can do a simulation and There we go. And then something I did not check, so you gotta f you gotta edit this out, is um, I need to do something quick. Move tool, tool change, before we actually video it. It's something I did not check. Yeah. 
Well, that should work. So if you can make it not super yellow, but more on the yellow side. But more on the yellow side. I'm I'm not am I in this? No. Okay, you're good. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what I wanted to show you, which I didn't check, is let's say, for instance, I'm only going to rough and finish the inside of this pocket. So I will go to tool the machining, move tool home. So you have different options. You can move it to a rapid, move it to a tool change, or move it to home. All of these do different things. So move tool to tool change. Um, select another tool I want another end mill and let's say I'm going to select the eight end mill and position number two then I want to do let's say a profile cutting just for finishing offset zero you can change your feeds and speeds depth of cuts and so forth I'm going to leave everything as is except for cutting increments should be um, left out because in finishing you want to do a full cut I want to finish that and that and I will say move tool to home let's say we're done now and what's nice about this is you can actually go and select screenshots of what you are doing for instance save job image call the image uh, inside pockets done it's okay i'm gonna leave it like that and we can go and generate the nc code simply by clicking on generate save it at a specific place it's just telling me that i need to add tools to my toolkit this would be your nc codes um, specifically for your cnc machine then you can print what we call a live job report within this report you can see the following things um, well you can see a, a list of all your job reports that you've done previously um, we can for instance look at all the jobs if i want to let's say i want to select the one we've been working on now click it so within this job report you can see the following things one is some job descriptions of course you can fill all this in for yourself um, which we will cover within training uh, the type of material uh, material can you can set up your own materials your own tools and so forth um, you've got some uh, details on the the job description then if you page on you will have your tool list of course we only use two uh, two tools and then up next you can view your images so you can export this as a pdf format uh, excel word or just a, a normal uh, image format you can print this out for your operator or if they have access to a computer you can um, mail this to them as a digital file and that's it